One of the most important features of a healthy diet is dietary diversity, meaning we eat a wide variety of different foods. And this has actually been studied in a variety of different ways. Uh, some research has looked at the number of different food groups or the number of different foods within each food group and how that impacts our health. But one of the most important studies in this field was this huge 2021 perspective study that followed nearly half a million people living in nine different European countries for an average of 22 years. And as usual, I'll put the citation in the video description. The study authors measured something called dietary species richness, which is the number of different species represented in the whole diet over the course of a full year. So if you eat salmon, that would count as one. If you eat broccoli, that would count as one. If you eat asparagus, that would count. Uh, apples would count. But steak and ground beef would only count as one because they come from the same species. They then divided the study participants into five quintiles. So the bottom quintile, the bottom 20%, consumed 48 or fewer different species throughout that full year. And the top quintile, the top 20%, consumed 81 or more different species throughout the full year. And what the study authors showed was that those people with the most diverse diet, that top quintile that consumed 81 or more different species throughout a year, had a 37% reduced risk of all-cause mortality, a general indicator of health and longevity than those people in the bottom quartile, the uh, quintile, the bottom 20% who had the least diverse diet. The study authors were then able to calculate that for every 10 additional species we add to our diet, we can expect an approximately 10% reduced risk of all-cause mortality. What was really interesting in this study is that they showed that there wasn't any one food group that was responsible for this effect. So it wasn't diversity in vegetables that was important or fruit or plant foods or animal foods, but just all foods. And also, as you would expect from any large perspective study, the study authors accounted for other factors in their statistical analysis, such as activity and smoking status, to make sure that dietary diversity isn't a proxy for something else that's actually the meaningful contributor to health. For example, it makes sure that people who exercise more are all, you know, people who also eat a lot more different foods. They made sure that wasn't what was really going on, that it really had to do with just how diverse the diet was. Now, it's really hard to extrapolate from this type of research to a target for how many different foods to eat per day or per week. But fortunately, there is some other science that can help us at least narrow that down a little bit. This is definitely a field where more studies are needed. There was a huge 2018 study out of the Human Gut Project that showed that people who consumed 30 or more different plant foods per week had a substantially healthier gut microbiome than people who consumed 10 or fewer different plant foods per week. And there's been some other studies showing that something like 10 to 12 different foods per day and 30 to 35 different foods per week would be an excellent target to benefit from a diverse diet. Now, if that sounds like a lot, it might be helpful to know that the average grocery store has between 50 and 80 different just vegetables and fruits in the produce section. And remember that this is dietary diversity from the whole diet. It's actually pretty easy as soon as you start making things like salads and soups to get a lot of different foods into a single meal. So if it's a scary concept to eat that many different foods, also remember that progress is more important than perfection and every single step you take towards a more diverse diet is going to have returns in terms of health outcomes.